Welcome to the Cage of Dreams, and I'm your host, Pro Wrestling's Bad Boy Carnage. And with me is my co-host and partner in crime, Tony D. What's up, Tony? Carnage, I'm doing great. How you doing this week? Oh, I'm doing awesome, man. How about you? You know, fall is one of my favorite times of the year. Really? Just fall? Is there any other times of the year that you like? I like summer because summer's so hot. Speaking of hot, <laughs> we have two, not one, but two guests on the show. Smoking hot from the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. Only I'm not going to tell you who they are. I didn't tell you all week. I've been you holding tell me it back. Anything. I know I didn't tell you, <laughs> but that's who's going to be on the show. We're going to hold it for a little bit and not tell anybody because first and foremost, it's about the fans, it man. So we've got to talk about the fans. We've got the fan question of the week. And this question is from Brian and Bowie. Mm -hmm. And he asked uh, Carnage, every week after your fan questions, you throw the card over your shoulder. Yeah, you do do you that. Know, is there a pile back there behind you? Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, <laughs> it doesn't matter, bro. Anyway, go on to another question. Uh, second question, this one is from the number one player, number one player, I thought that was me, but in Washington, D.C. And he asked, is that lovely T5 girl single? Hmm. Because that girl is smoking hot. Hmm. Well, player, that is none your business. <laughs> Good luck. Anyway, it is that time. It's the top five, man. It's, it's one of the hottest things going on TV today. Everybody loves it. They always write in about it. I love it. <laughs> and this here, because we have the lovely first ladies of football yes. on the show, Yes. I decided to do the top five worst types of cheerleaders out so there. So these are the top five cheerleaders. Yeah, these are pretty bad, man. That you wouldn't want to be seen with. No. Mm -mm. Under really any circumstances. Mm -mm, no. Okay. I wouldn't even want to be even... Anybody know that I know them? <laughs> okay. Let's see what you got. All right, so here we go. Number five. Yeah, this guy from the Steelers. Oh, my. You know, we were talking earlier why the Steelers don't have cheerleaders. He's why. I see why. <laughs> Tons of fun right there. Anyway, that was terrible. Number four. Number four. Dallas representing. Dallas representing. Yeah, you know. look at that. Is that Get yeah, rid of him. Get rid know. of him. Yeah, that's yeah, moving on. Anyway, number three. I guess these are the uh, village people wannabes or something, but that's uh, Green Bay right there. That's what being up in Wisconsin does to your brain. I know, it's you all that cheese. You can't make cheese and cold because yeah. that's what you get. It's terrible. Get rid of it. Anyway, number two. This guy here, I don't know. He's, uh, he's got the beard going on. He's got more hair under his arms than I have on my whole body. I do like his socks. Really? No. No, I don't think so. Anyway, and the number one. Number one. It's actually kind of a dog, really. It's not very, very pretty, but it's probably the best of, of what we have so far. Hmm. And it's our number one. Aww. Really? You like that? It's kind of cute, it's I the guess. the cutest one of the bunch. Cutest than the rest of them. Because <laughs> they're just all downright terrible. But anyway, right. those are the worst of our top five. And now we're going to go to break. And when we come back, we have two of the best. The best. We have Terry Lamb and Janine Samuels on Cage of Dreams. Come on back. I'm Nyla. And I'm Kelly. And you're watching my bad boy Carnage and Tony D on Cage of Dreams. Welcome back to the Cage of Dreams. I'm your host, the bad boy of cable. Gonna have to change my moniker a little bit. Bad boy of cable, Carnage, my man Tony D. Yep. And before I introduce our guest, I would like to give a little shout out to a Make-A-Wish child that I met this weekend. Uh, his name is uh, Hunter Cornell. Uh, he's nine years old. To my new best friend out there, Hunter, you're my man. Carnage, that's wonderful. Thanks, man. You got I appreciate a big heart. that, man. Yeah, I try to do, you know, try to do what I can, man. Hunter, it's my boy right there. But now, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world, we have with us not one, but two. Washington Redskins alumni. These ladies, they do it all. They do stuff inside, outside. They do charities, everything. We're going to talk about it. Uh, Terry Lamb, Janine Samuels, welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you, Carnage. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Welcome, Thanks guys. for having Thank us. Wow, thanks for coming on. You know, I know it's been a while. We've been trying to get you on the show, and, and uh, we're glad you finally made it. And uh, we got a lot to talk about tonight. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get it all in. I know the show's only 30 minutes. I wish it was 60, but we're going to try to do what we can to get it in. 
Uh, first and foremost, I know uh, you ladies were former cheerleaders of the Washington Redskins. Mm -hmm. um, can you want to just touch on that a little bit? Maybe, you know, uh, how long you were with them, you know, what, uh, sure. what you did? Sure. Uh, I was with the team uh, 79 to 83. I cheered in two Super Bowls, Super Bowl 17 and 18. That's amazing. That's so cool, I, was, I was there five years. I, was, uh, I served as a captain uh, during that time. And, um, yeah, it was just a, a wonderful time in my life. It was probably some of the best times that I've ever had in my life. And I was part of the Millennium Cheerleaders. So I was with the Redskins from 99 to 07. I was captain for four of those years, went to the Pro Bowl in 2004, was on the cover of the calendar, swimsuit calendar, twice. And then I took a year and a half off and um, then started cheering for the Washington Wizards. So I cheered for them for three years and was a captain for two years. Carnage, you weren't kidding. We have the best of the best. <laughs> <laughs> What can I say, man? This cage of dreams, man. We only have the best on the show. Let's keep it rolling. <laughs> I mean, now, now, ladies, I know that's, uh, you know, that's how you got your start. I know since then you've, you've come a long way from that. Uh, the Alumni Association has started. I know, Janine, you have some things going on as well. Uh, but a little bit about, about the football side. Uh, I know you guys were out there. Was there any kind of uh, craziness back then? You know, is anything, what's your most memorable moments that you remember from that time? Hmm. Most, one of my most memorable moments uh, as a cheerleader was during the playoffs back in 82, uh, actually 82 and 83 at RFK Stadium and uh, just being on the field and watching the fans uh, bounce up and down on the bleachers. The bleachers right. were going oh, up yeah. and down. They always looked like they were going to give out any minute. <laughs> uh, and it's just a moment that uh, I know all of my uh, friends that were cheerleaders then will never forget because the, the stadium seemed to be going up and down all the way around RFK Stadium. It was just uh, uh, just unbelievable. That's amazing. That's the fans for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and luckily those fans transitioned over into FedEx Field. So I'd have to say <laughs> my most memorable moment was definitely my first time in the uniform, coming out for that first preseason game back in 1999 and realizing how huge that stadium was. Oh, yeah. wow. And just hearing everyone yell for the Redskins cheerleaders, well, at that time, actually the Redskinettes, mm -hmm. when we were introduced to perform. It was just an overwhelmingly amazing experience. And oh, then wow. probably the second one, we didn't have a Super Bowl, unfortunately, while I was there for my eight years, but I was voted by my team to represent the cheerleaders at the 2004 Pro Bowl in Hawaii. So that Wonderful. was another amazing experience 10 days in beautiful Hawaii representing the burgundy and gold the first ladies of football was you know a complete honor wow that's crazy right. Pro Bowl, man that's and, and you were at the uh, Super Bowl is that correct yes I, I uh, cheered at Super Bowl 17 and 18 we won uh, 17 so I and then we lost 18 so I got to experience the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat but nice. it was all good you know just going to a Super Bowl was uh, pretty unbelievable and um, I was also um, I was, uh, in the first Redskins cheerleaders calendar that uh, we put out in 83, 84. So, um, and then I was also selected to go to uh, Taiwan uh, to do a, a U.S. Uh, promotional, pro U.S. products promotional tour in Taiwan for two weeks. There were six of us that went, and that was the first time ever that uh, NFL cheerleaders had ever toured Asia. So that wow. was pretty special. How was that? Trailblazers. Yeah. Was that pretty cool or what going over there? Was that your first time ever going? That was the first time that I'd ever been in Asia mm -hmm. and they treated us like gold. I mean, we were like rock stars over there. We, uh, they just um, catered to us. We got so spoiled when we were over there and we came back. It was uh, kind of a letdown because, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, they, they took us uh, shopping. Uh, they gave us, uh, they took us to a department store. It's one of our sponsors, and they gave us two attendants. And, and when we would, um, I'd pick out a dress. Uh, they, I'd go in the dressing room. They would undress me and dress me. And if the dress was too small, they would take the seam out and, and make it spoiled. so it fit. Wow. That is yeah. wow. Now, that they didn't get that type of treatment when we went wow. on tour. we got to go to Asia. <laughs> now, that's being spoiled. Then you come so. back, you get off the plane, you're like, what do you mean I got to mow the grass on Saturday? <laughs> and they, they also, they opened up a sushi bar for us, and they said you could sample anything there that you want. And most of the girls didn't want to 
sample anything. <laughs> but uh, I, I like sushi, so I, I, I sushi. enjoyed that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's one thing that people don't realize is we spend a lot of time obviously supporting the team, but we are huge supporters of the military. Um, yeah. The Redskins cheerleaders are one of, if not the most requested NFL cheerleading team um, by DOD to go overseas to support our troops. So I've been, been to Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan. Um, I've also, you know, had some luxury tours. I went to Hawaii, Guam, um, Kwajalein, which you actually have to have permission from the government to even step yes. foot on that base. But wow. it's just amazing because we're taking a little bit of the U.S. to these foreign countries where, you know, our men and women in the service are sacrificing day in and day out for our country. And we perform for them. We have a variety show that we put on for them. We sign autographs, take pictures. And we are literally sitting in signing lines for hours on top of hours. Wow. And the time goes by so fast because we love being there in support of them. Oh, and I'm they sure appreciate they it so must much. must appreciate it. Like I, I can't even express it, you know. Yeah. Long oh, yeah. come the first ladies of football. What's not to appreciate? That's right. You <laughs> can appreciate all of it. Now I know the. I, I look back at some of the older pictures and stuff when they first started and everything, um, and they look very young. Now, uh, since then, is there like age restrictions for you know anybody watching out there that might you know might want to be a cheerleader or anything? Uh, just a little information about that. Is there kind of like an age restriction as far as uh, being? Well, for the Redskins cheerleaders, you have to be 18. Okay. Uh, most of the teams require you to be 18. Um, I believe most most of them do. But uh, for the Redskins, they have to be 18. Right, and then you also have to have um, a full-time job yeah. or yeah. be a full-time student or be a mom. So there's this misconception that it's a, like being a cheerleader is a full-time job, and technically, yes, it is, yeah. um, as far as time commitment and the you know amount of energy and effort that we put into our position. But um, we are a group of very professional, educated, intelligent women, and a lot of people don't realize that. So right. most of us, you know, have full-time jobs where we've been to school all day. We leave. We go to practice at FedEx Field. We're there for another, you know, three, three and a half hours. We're there on the weekends. We're doing our promotions and our charity events. We're going on tours for the military. So there's a lot that goes into it. So technically, I guess it is a full-time job. Um, so we end up having like two or three full-time jobs, I guess, <laughs> at one <Wow>. time. <laughs> that is dedication. <laughs> but is. we love it. You know, yeah. we love what we do. We love dancing. We love performing. You know, being at FedEx Field and supporting the Redskins is absolutely amazing. So it's, it's worth that time commitment. No, that's, totally. that's great, man. I think so. I'm just worn out just hearing what all they're doing. <laughs> Holy mackerel. I think originally, Carnage, I, I started watching football. And it wasn't for the game at first. It was for the first ladies of football. Right. Well, that's why I started watching the game. And later, as I learned the rules, I learned to appreciate the whole thing. Well, that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> now, you ladies, since that time, I know, um, I know that was kind of a stepping stone of, of getting to where you're at now. Mm -hmm. And I know the uh, Alumni Association uh, got started. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about that, how it got started, because uh, I know you're the president of, of the mm -hmm. Alumni Association. So tell us a little bit about sure. how that started. Um, well, back in 84, at the, begin the beginning of the season, I knew that I wasn't going to be coming back the next season. So um, I, the, one of the things that I knew that I was going to miss the most is uh, all my friends that I had made uh, uh, being a cheerleader. Um, and I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to do something that would uh, make sure that we stay connected. And I thought that forming an alumni association would be the answer. So I went to a couple of my friends that had been former cheerleaders, and I said, hey, would you be interested in helping me set this up? I think, you know, this would be a good thing, and we could maintain the camaraderie that we had formed as cheerleaders. And they said, yes, let's do it. So uh, we uh, met with Mr. Cook, Jack Kent Cook, Thanks. and uh, got his blessing, because we are using the Redskins name. Yep. Uh, and uh, we've uh, designed our own logo. We have uh, a, we had a couple of graphic artists that are, were for, former cheerleaders, and one of the ladies came up with the logo, and we used that. As a matter of fact, it's in. Um, it's you showed the uh, the logo yeah, it's earlier. It's a beautiful necklace. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and so you know, it was approved by the team, and we took off from there. And right now, uh, we've got close to 900 alum wow. alumni. And we have 300 paid members uh, in Nine, our organization. 900 alumni. Yeah. 
That's a lot of cheerleaders. That's a lot. Right? It's been since 1962. Wow. Yeah, no kidding. That's just the that's, Washington area only? That's just, just Washington, Washington. That's Washington. That's the Washington okay. Redskins Cheerleaders okay. Alumni Association. So that's we, one company picnic. I want to get an education. <laughs> <thing. Yeah>. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> we, we do uh, a lot of charity work. That's another thing that we uh, did as cheerleaders that um, we wanted to continue. So we support... I mean, we've, we've supported so many uh, charitable organizations. We, we do a lot of work with the Redskins uh, Charitable Foundation. Uh, we help with the Redskins Welcome Home Luncheon. We help with the Redskins uh, Alumni Golf Tournament that they have every year. Nice. Uh, we uh, work with the uh, breast cancer uh, organizations, the various ones, Avon Walk for Breast Cancer. We just did uh, the walk this year, May, and I think we raised around 13000 um, yep. We have uh, former alum that are survivors, so uh, it's very uh, uh, close and dear to our heart to uh, do what we can to find a cure. So, yep. uh, but we're very, well, very even active. The, the league is adopted, right? I think October yes. Breast Cancer Awareness mm -hmm. Month. Yes. You yes. see the pink on the players. I, yep. I, I love when they pay tribute to that. That's awesome, man. It's awesome. And we have, um, you know, that's a chari the charity side of our, what we do, and we also we have reunions. We try to have reunions every couple years. We do halftime shows at, um, at FedEx. We've done around five halftime shows now, and wow. we dance with the current cheerleaders. And wow. we have ladies there from 1962 to the present. I mean, wow. some of the ladies are 82, 83 years old. Really? And they're out there doing routines, oh, wow. throwback routines from when they were cheerleaders. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, did they wear the throwback outfits? Because I know back in the day they had, well, they did. They had yeah. like the, with the little feather. The feather. And the, yeah. the well, little at thing. the yeah. last yeah. halftime cool. show, yeah. we did have um, a current cheerleader mm -hmm. that borrowed um, uniforms from each era. And wow. they had those on and performed. Actually, someone borrowed mine from 99 and yeah. wore that during the halftime show. Wow. But it's great because it gives us an opportunity to build the relationship and learn how it was back in the day. Most definitely. And for them to kind of understand how things are currently. And it's, it's, it's amazing because they paved the way for all of us. And if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be where we were. And we understand that, we respect that, and we look up to our um, yes. alumni. So it's, it's definitely it's quite a network. They keep, they keep these, are they in individuals' closets or is there a, I have all like of the a holiday? I have all the, have the throwback uniforms wow, at my great. house. Wow. That's great. The, the that's alumni awesome. office is at my house. I have a, <laughs> it's a museum, actually. Gotcha. <laughs> Now, now it's have, my woman cave. Have they ever thought <laughs> like about maybe like something it. like that? Maybe some kind of like a you know like a museum or something at uh, FedEx Field for the for the uh, cheerleaders. Maybe have like some of the old outfits and like pictures. The place is big like enough, that. right? Yeah. You get a yeah, whole wing. Definitely. I believe they have one um, one uh, Redskins cheerleader uh, uniform in a box, a shadow box at the stadium, on the club level, um, but. Hmm. Uh, We'll have to look yeah. into that. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, because I know they have that whole uh, section there at FedEx Field. They have a lot of the old, you know, old yes. pictures and everything. Yeah. And, and there is a yeah. uniform yeah. in that box. Yeah, they need to have like There's a whole a box wing there, for man. these ladies, man. I, mean, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> you hear me? Dan, the man? There's not very many of the 62 uniforms left, and, yeah. you know, we have one. Wow. Just one. Is that the one that's there, or is it? At the stadium? No. No, that's the, the headquarters. One you have? <laughs> at the headquarters. <laughs> wow. WRCAA headquarters. Now, now I know, Janine, you have also done some other things uh, with some other teams, and you also do some like sports casting and things mm -hmm. like that as well. Uh, tell us what was your like your most memorable interview that you ever had. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> that's actually an easy one. Um, Joe Theismann. I had the opportunity to interview him. He was at FedEx Field um, for awareness of prostate cancer. Wow. And it was a very profound interview, first just because I was meeting Joe Theismann. So <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. But he was so nice and yes, very personable. Right. Um, when he realized that I was a former Redskins cheerleader, I was his best friend and his best buddy after that. That's so I got wonderful. some pictures. Um, but what's really unique about that interview is I ended up telling my father about it in the event at FedEx Field and he ended up going to get tested about a month or two months later. Unfortunately, had prostate cancer, wow. but thank heavens he was tested, caught it in the earlier stages, and you know he's fine and okay now. But that experience with Joe Theismann, I will always remember because I was kind of able to help you know, pre 
impact something that could have been not so great with my father. So wow. oh, most definitely. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. Where was that up in his broadcast booth or? No, it was actually down in the locker room um, where they were doing the prostate um, exams. Wow. So he Roger. was there, he was talking to people that were coming in to get their blood work and I was able to, oper you know, just to interview him about everything that was going on and why he supported it. And I mean, I don't know if you all know, but he actually had prostate cancer as well. So that's why he's a huge mm -hmm. proponent of, yep. of the cause. So that was definitely awesome. by far the most memorable um, interview that I've had wow. post cheerleader world. <laughs> but then I'm also um, currently the arena host for the Washington Wizards. So in that position, I get to um, interview or interact with a lot of the fans. So that's neat as well. And being a cheerleader, that's our main goal. You know, we, we perform and we entertain, but we also interact with fans and mm -hmm. we're a role model for fans that come to the game. So yep. that's kind of my role now that I've hung up my pom-poms. I'm interacting <laughs> with them as the host for the Wizards. But you, you know what they about, say, once a cheerleader, always right. a cheerleader. <laughs> that's right. We were talking about the fans now. For all, all our fans out there, all the female fans, young ladies out there that might be, want to be a cheerleader, maybe you can give some advice as to you know how they would go about maybe wanting to be a first lady of football. Yeah, and there. you know what? Being um, an alumni, that's one of the questions that we receive often um, you know how do how do we become a cheerleader and so myself along with another alumni cheerleader um, Sue and Von Nash we co-founded a company called Sideline Prep and we actually help girls get on teams um, for Redskins the Ravens the Wizards and even semi-pro teams that are right here in the area so we provide one-on-one -on -one consultations and a lot of uh, people don't realize it's not just about danceability mm -hmm. but it's the complete total package right. so you have to think about your look and it's not just your hair or your makeup it's your hair it's your makeup it's your audition outfit um, it's the shoes that you wear the stockings and the hose that you have on um, you also have to make sure you are fit so we have a nutrition and fitness class to help yep. girls understand what they need to be eating um, the the correct exercises to do to get tone interview skills. We are public ambassadors. So That's we're right. always out there talking to fans, doing interviews. So having the correct interview skills to present yourself in the best light is also extremely important. Modeling, you've got to be able to walk the runway and strut your stuff. <laughs> so we have, you know, a session that helps girls with modeling and then also, you know, dance. So making sure that each girl understands and knows the style of the Redskins cheerleaders or the Wizard Girls. Um, so I guess the one piece of advice that I would give is you know, looking at yourself overall and making sure that you are the complete package and then making sure that you have an understanding of what the organization expects and wants. So, for example, the Redskins, actually almost all of the teams in this area have prep classes. Yep. So the girls should go to these prep classes and interact with cheerleaders and really get to know um, what they expect and what they need and dance with them and learn from them at these prep classes before ever even walking into an audition. Sure. I mean, the they may see it on TV and say, I want to be that, but I mean, right. have go through all this, there's yeah, so much to it, right? It's not just, oh, yeah. you know, shaking your pom-poms, bro. No, it's, it's not like that. Talent, anymore. fitness, it's whole, everything, right. like you she said. And you have to start early, you know, so for Redskins, you, uh, the audition process is end of um, January, you know, February time frame. You don't want to start at the beginning of January to start, you know, start getting ready. You want to start preparing for prep classes that start at the end of January so that you can be ready for auditions in March. Right. Same thing for the Wizards. Their auditions are normally July. You need to start months in advance because right. it's not something that you can just turn on and off. You, it, it is truly a process. And all of the girls that are currently on the team worked very hard to get on the team and they don't want to lose their spot so yes. <laughs> they have to try out every year yes and it's very very difficult to make the squad i i actually judge I'm, i serve as a judge for the the current cheerleaders mm -hmm. so uh and you know the girls in the final at the, the final auditions they're all very very good dancers and it, it comes down to you start going well is their hair good you know does right. their hair look good do they have a nice yeah, are you calendar right. ready? Right. Yeah, calendar ready. I don't know, am I calendar ready? <laughs> well, I, I know Almost. year after year, maybe if you want a fresh perspective on judging. I know Carnage and I, right? We have volunteering. <laughs> we judge. actually do have men that sit on yeah. our judges panel. Yeah. And we have actually some supporters, um, you know, military servicemen as well. So we'll be sure to put your name in the bucket and you never well, know. Yeah, we'll, definitely, yeah. <laughs> we'll definitely let the cool. director of the Redskins cheerleaders know. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're going to need to go to break here. And when we come back, I know it's going to be your segment. I know you want to do this trivia challenge with me and the ladies here. So yes, we're going to we do that when we come back from the break. Cage of Dreams, True or False Showdown. 
Yeah, you know it, so come on back. Cage of dreams. Hey guys, this is Chris. Man, you guys got to check out the Cage of Dreams show, man. That's things been running since February. Awesome, man. Welcome back to the Cage of Dreams. We're here with the lovely Janine Samuels, Terry Lamb, former Redskin, Redskinettes, Redskin cheerleaders, whatever. They're beautiful. They're here on the Cage of Dreams. What more can we ask for? Anyway, it's our time now. We're going to have our trivia face-off. Carnage, this is, the against the ladies. Of, this is the Cage of Dreams True or False Challenge. Okay. And I'm going to ask you ladies some true or false questions. And Carnage, I'm going to ask you some. I'll okay. tally the results and we'll have a winner. Let's do it. Go ahead, ladies. Okay. Originally called the Redskinettes. The Washington Redskin cheerleaders were founded in 1776 by George Washington to rally the First Continental Army. True or false? False. That is false. <laughs> the Washington Redskins cheerleaders have performed around the world supporting the USO and our U.S. troops abroad. True. That is true. Very true. With members of over 200 strong, the Washington Redskins Cheerleaders Alumni Association is by far the largest professional cheerleaders alumni association in the NFL today. True. true. That is true. <laughs> and the fourth question I have, the caveman portrayed in a recent Geico ad with Brian Arakpo is actually a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader in disguise. True. That is true. Okay. You got four out of four. All right, good. I'm ready. True. Let's do it. All right, you ready for yours, sir? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry, Carnage. We're out of time. You're, what? We're out of you're, time. You're going to have to forfeit the round. That makes you the loser, and the ladies Woo! are the winners. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. That makes me 0-3, man. That ain't right. There's something wrong with this. Yes, there is. 0-3. Anyway, I want to thank you ladies for coming on. Terry Lamb, Janine Samuels, you're beautiful. I love you. Come back on any time. I want to thank all the fans for tuning in. And like I always say, don't just live your life, live your dream. Later.